deriving expression for the rotational inertia or moment of inertia for a uniform solid disk or cylinder with mass m and radius r about its uh, cylinder axis. Meaning the disk or cylinder rotates like this about its symmetrical axis. We know that the rotational inertia of a point mass is mr squared. But in this case, we don't have to chop this mass distribution into bits of point mass because the disk has cylindrical symmetry. And we already know how to find the rotational inertia of another shape that also has cylindrical symmetry. What is the other cylindrically symmetric shape we can use to help us find the rotational inertia for this disk? It's a hoop. We already know the rotational inertia of a ring or a hoop is also mr squared because all of the mass in a hoop is the same distance r from the axle. Now, if we use this equation to help us find the rotational inertia of a solid uniform disk, what shape little pieces of mass should we chop this disk into? we should chop the disk into extremely thin layers of hoops. For example, this thin layer of hoop has a mass dm and a radius little r. And it has a rotational inertia of di. That equals to the mass of the hoop times the radius of the hoop squared. The mass of the hoop times the radius of the hoop squared. The mass of this extremely thin layer of hoop is dm. The radius of the hoop is r. And if we add all of the di's of all of the thin layers of hoops together, we get the total rotational inertia of the entire disk. In this case, the r squared is not a constant because a different dm would have a different r. So we cannot take the r squared out of the integral. To express this integral in a more familiar format, I'm going to write it as uh, the integral of r squared dm. The r is a variable, and we have r squared, a function of r here, with dm. In order for us to be able to integrate this, we have to have dr here to integrate the function of r. So we need to figure out how to turn this dm into something dr. dm is the mass of this thin hoop. Because the disk has the same thickness throughout, the mass is proportional to the top area. We can say that the mass is surface density or aerial density times the surface area. The surface density is the mass per unit area. The disk has a mass m and the radius r. So the mass per unit area is the mass m divided by the top area of the disk, pi big R squared. The dr is not the top area of the thin hoop. dr is the thickness of the thin hoop. The top area of this thin hoop is a thin ring like this. To find the area of this thin ring, we can cut this ring out and open it like this. When we pull it out straight, we get a very thin rectangle. The area of this thin rectangle is the top area of this thin hoop. And the area of this thin rectangle is the height times the base. The height of this thin rectangle is the thickness of the hoop, dr. The base of the rectangle is the circumference of the thin hoop, that is 2 pi r. So 2 pi r times dr, the height times the base for this thin rectangle, is the top area of this thin hoop. So we can now rewrite this 
is the integral of r squared, and then we can replace the dm with this whole thing right here, which has the pi's cancel, and then we have 2m times little r over big R squared, and then dr. We can take out the constants, 2 big M over big R squared. We can take it out of the integral, and then we combine these here, we get R cubed. When we integrate R cubed, we get R to the fourth times one fourth. And we do not have to do the plus c because this is a definite integral. We are adding all of the di of all layers of thin hoops. From the very center, little r equals to zero. To the outmost layer, little r equals to big R. So the lower mid limit of the integral is r equals to zero, and we integrate all the way to the outmost layer r equals to big R. So now we can plug in the upper limit, and that gives me 2m over r squared times 1 fourth times the r, big R, to the fourth, minus what we get when we plug in the lower limit, which is 0. So if we simplify this, we will get 1 half m r squared. This is the rotational inertia of the uniform solid disk about its cylinder axis. Notice that the rotational inertia does not depend on the height of the disk. So this equation also works for a tall disk or cylinder rotating about its cylinder axis.